What's going on, everybody? It is me, your boy, Flash Jones, back again with, yes, another video. And in this one, guys, real simple, real straightforward. We got a couple three-bay covered hoppers from Walters that we got to check out. So, that being said, let's go ahead and jump right on in to this video. Okay, good people. Like I said, we got these Walters three-bay covered hoppers that we got to take a look at here in HO scale. But before we do that, real quick, we do have to take a look at where they come from. So, like I said, these are the Walters three bay cover hoppers. These are some of the ones here. This is Walters website, as you can see at the tip of the top. And as you can see, these are all the newer runs of these uh, 60 foot NSC 5130, sorry, 5150 three bay covered hoppers. That's one of the ones that I got there in Illinois Central. Uh, I have the Furex model and I have the ADM. This one right here to be exact. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Get a little dope on it. So, as you guys can see, as I said, this is a 60 foot NSC 5153 bay covered hopper by ADM number 52279. That's the color ADM logo. This is the price. This is the part number. I will show you guys that in a second. And there is a little bit of information on it if you want to see that. So, before we do anything else, we have to get at least one of these guys out of the box so we can take a look at it. Got the Illinois Central here. We're going to put him to the side. Got the Furex model here. Going to take him, put him to the side. We're going to take a look at pretty much everybody's favorite one. And it's definitely one of my favorite ones to see and definitely to have. It's the ADM 3-Bay Cover Hopper. Give you guys a quick look at the box like I always want to show you. Got some company branding, some information, HO scale. There's a front again, uh, some more information, value and variety from model railroaders. Okay, same thing. And here's that part number that I was just mentioning. It's the same exact one here that I just showed you there on Walther's website. Okay, same exact thing that I mentioned. And just a little bit of car information car specific information fully assembled turned metal wheel sets proto max metal knuckle couplers okay looking at the back side we have some more uh, walther's information here on the back pause and read if need okay walther's website or there there's your address barcode qr let's get this guy open So, sliding the car out of the original packaging, you do get the Walther's warranty card there on the back. Give them a call if you need anything. I remember somebody had asked me in one of my previous videos for Walther's information or some other manufacturer's information. There is the warranty info. Pause and read. Okay. Nothing else comes in the back. A clean opening in the back here two-part style kind of case you have the oh there's some tape on the end of course kind of, kind of caught me off guard but there's some tape here on the end soft plastic covering the model one thing that I always do just flip these guys open let it fall into my hand take it out a couple things fell out you have these little cushions to kind of keep the car from keep that car from moving okay good people so Got to move a little fast. Seems like all my natural lighting coming in from outside is going away. Anywho, looking at this car, I did leave the plastic down. This was the plastic that was on the car. So I just decided to leave it down, give a little protection to the model. Um, but looking at it from the very top, you see you got etched metal walkway here up top. Got very minimal hatch detail as this is a Walther's mainline um, model. You have your ADM logo. And a nice little sheen. I'm sure you can probably pick it up. You can kind of see it in this area. But it definitely has a nice uh, reflective little sheen across the entire car. You got your car number, your car initial, car number here, your low limit, weight limit, whatnot. Um, plate C is what that says there. I'll get a couple close-ups on those. Um, looking down here at the bottom of the model. Oh, look at that. You can see a little bit of a defect here. Let me zoom in. Looking down here at the bottom of the model, first thing that I notice is there's a little bit of a defect. Um, the uh, 
what do you want to call this, the exit valve per se, the dump valve, the dump chute um, to drain these hoppers of the wheat or grain or corn that's inside of here is bent. So can you, you should be able to see that. You guys can see how this one kind of fans out straight and even the very far one down here fans out straight, right? This one down here at the A end of this car is bent up. You should be able to see the difference in those. And I'll kind of show it to you this way. Let me see here. There you go. So you can see that it's bent up right here. So um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get in touch with Walther's, see if they want to send me a replacement because my guess is in order to correct that, they have to send me a, an entire new model. Um, I don't know though. That's interesting. So like I said, uh, metal wheel sets down here, kind of black faced on the insides of the wheels, which that's nice. Um, not a whole lot to really see on the sides of the car. Looking down here at the B end of the side still of the car. Um, you can kind of see some of this information here. I can't really see it with my eyes. I mean, I can see what these numbers are and whatnot, but I can't see what's inside this little black um, boxes here. You do have the FRA reflective striping that is not reflective on the cars, um, but it is modeled as, you know, a strip of probably yellow paint. Um, but you yeah, not a whole lot to see here. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little closer. So here we go. So I'm able to get you a little closer. So you may be able to make out some of this information here. You can definitely make that out. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, if it's coming through really at all too clearly. Looking uh, down here at the trucks, we have the springs that are modeled inside the trucks, which is nice. It's not real springs, it's just modeled on a full piece of plastic. Um, you have some bearing caps here that do not move. As you guys can see, the wheel set is moving and the wheel bearing cap is not moving, it's not rotating. So, of course, like I said, this is a mainline model, so probably shouldn't expect that most of that there. Looking at the bottom of the car, you do have your vibrator brackets that are in place. Um, let me see if I can make that out. I think it says, it looks like it says B, yeah, B100 uh, cubic feet. Let me see if I can show you that. Well, I had it wrong, 1800 cubic feet. Look like 100 kind of from my distance, but it's definitely tiny, but it is legible. Um, you can see it there. My guess is that it's saying B because this is the break in of the car. Looking at the middle one, you can see it says C, and then it's 1550 cubic feet. I can see that one. And then on the A end, it's, it says A, and then my guess is either 1900 or 1800. Looks like 1800. I look at the the camera so you do have a little bit of detail on down here not a whole lot though you have really practically no underbody car body detail on this guy um, but let's take a quick look here at the B end so looking here at the B end you do have your handbrake here and you also do have some grab irons running up the sides of the car the back side of the car I should say and some shorter, shorter ones here. No etched metal here on the side um, because once again, it is a mainline um, item. You do have up here at the top, you can see that there, your road name, road number. Looking down here where the brake housing and whatnot is, you guys can kind of see down in here. You have a control valve, see if I can get that to you. It's kind of hard to make it all up because everything's the same gray molded plastic but you guys can see here you have that control valve inside here you have your which my guess is this is your air reservoir your two-sided air emergency and auxiliary air reservoir you do have a let me see if I can still show it to you there it is you have your piston your brake cylinder that's this guy here and you have your piston detail with a little bit of a chain. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah, you guys can kind of see some chain right there in the shadow of the pointer. 
So you have a little bit of chain detail down in there. And this is your control valve. Looks like it's got a spitter valve on there too. So that's nice to be able to, be able to, to model that in such fine uh, detail with it being so small and being the same exact color. Um, probably extremely hard to make out, but you can, kinda, you can really see down in here and um, see the details that they were provided. Um, this is probably a really good place to, you know, get some grime and do some weathering and, you know, change up the color in here and, you know, really, really give this car some um, some life. Um, looking at the quick side, um, you do have uh, some more grab irons here, stirrup, two, two steps stirrup, stirrup down here on this end. Metal coupler, love these couplers. I watched a video the other day and guy come just snap these off. It was hilarious. I think he was um, BA Rail System, I think is his uh, YouTube channel name. He just snapped them off because it was giving him problems in a, in a, when he was running some of his trains on his layout. And it, it was just awesome. Just that snap, it was satisfying snap. Can't explain it. Don't judge me. <laughs> Anywho, um, looking at the AN real quick here, um, you do have a big hole right in there. And um, not that that's a problem or anything. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know what the looks like it does go deep inside there so this is my pointer and I got it I'm able to get it pretty deep in there so you figure here's the end and I'm able to to push it in at least halfway you know that's the end of the stick there now zoom out you know there's the end of the stick and like I said it, it goes in there quite a ways so um, I don't know why that's there um, I don't really think that that's modeled on the real ones at all either. But anyways, it's there. Um, something for you to, I don't know, maybe add some 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 dust or particles in there or something like that. But anywho, another metal coupler here on the end. And uh, that's pretty much it, folks. It's not a whole lot to um, definitely free rolling. Um, and it's, it's just trying to ro like straight roll right off of the plastic um, or the, the box that it came in. So... Um, we'll take a quick look at the Furex and the Illinois Central um, covered hoppers, and then we're going to wrap this video. All right, folks, looking at the Furex, a lot of the same exact detail as you guys saw on the ADM. We'll zoom in here, get a quick close look at it. Looking at the top, same extra metal, um, same roof detail, um, hatch pattern style. Um, you do have your a little bit of a difference in the... Uh, um, the FRA reflective striping. Here's the ADM. You guys can see how it's going horizontal in line with the car. This reflective striping is vertical um, on this car. Um, but here you go. You got your Furex, your, your road name, your car number, and the same detail as on the ADM. Um, looks like the same information there. As far as the B, C, A, and the talking of the, the vibrator bracket and what the cubic footing is there. My guess is that extra cubic footing is coming from, um, of course, you got, you know, it's not that it's split up in the middle here, but, you know, when they dump, I'm guessing, you know, only, you know, somewhere in about this area kind of comes out of this chute. And you figure from there all the way to back in here kind of comes out of here so maybe more comes out of the ends than it does in the middle in real life not too sure but just thought that was something to point out anywho um got the same um grab irons and two-step stirrups here we'll take a look at the b end here in a minute Actually, we'll take a look at it now taking a look at that b end you have a lot of that same exact detail control valve handbrake and hamburg chain detail down in here okay got your piston got your brake cylinder got your air reservoir same hand hand uh, grab irons running up the side to the top and of course that etched metal is that plastic that's actually plastic i want to say that that's plastic i don't think that that's metal i want to say that's just reflective yeah that's plastic sorry about that guys this is not etched metal this is plastic yeah that's plastic Anywho, um, you do have your one metal item, uh, the couplers on each end. Got your couplers there, and uh, looking at the side again. There you go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the 
Fearless. Okay, good people. We have the last star of the show. Last but not least, Illinois Central plastic, not extra metal, plastic, um, top detail, uh, same roofing pattern as the last three. And we'll take a group, a, a close look at these um, three together once we get done. Um, but looking at the Illinois Central, um, a lot of the same. It does just like the Furex as well. It has that little bit of reflective sheen as you guys can kind of see there as I wiggle this back and forth. Um, I see road name road number um, same of the exact same information um, one thing that I am noticing is that there is no reflective FRA reflective striping on this car um, you know that's actually becoming one of my pet peeves is that not that it doesn't have it but the reflective striping that is on these cars is not reflective at all it's just painted to imitate reflective striping which I'm not a big fan of because if you ever do night uh, nighttime operations on any layout um, it's definitely going to be nice to have that um, um, that extra level of detail in your in your uh, in your models to actually have reflective striping. Looking at the side, got some fingerprints there. More for me, so I don't know where that's where, where that's coming from. Anywho, um, you got your logo here, Illinois Central here. Um, we have some information here. Looks like it just says caution: hatch must be opened before discharge load before discharging load external fin valve and all of that is yeah before discharging load all of that is definitely legible um, without looking through the camera but it's easier to read it once you see it through the camera um, some more information here same exact thing on the bottom of the car as the previous two models and looking at the B end you have your brake wheel you have your piston detail, your brake cylinder detail, your air reservoir, and your handbrake chain that does go down to the piston, your metal coupler, and your black-faced wheels that do not have rotating bearing caps. I really like rotating bearing caps. It makes it really makes these models that much more interesting. Same grab irons. All of this is plastic once again. Um, plastic grab irons running up to the top of the car. Halfway horizontal grab iron. Looking at the opposite end or opposite side, um, same thing as um, both sides of the car and the other two models. Two two steps there up, grab irons. Uh, just another kind of look at that B end uh, detail down inside there. Um, like I said, guys, these are going to be nice to get some to get some uh, modeling and some weathering weathering done on the inside of these. And uh, there's a hole on this end too, so obviously it must do something. I don't know. Um, but obviously it's there for something. Okay, good people. So just taking a real quick look at these three, you guys can definitely see the difference in paint, um, between the ADM and the Illinois Central or even the Furex and the ADM Central or <laughs> the AD, uh, the Furex and the Illinois Central. You can definitely see that that one of them, you know, specifically the Illinois Central has a more, uh, darker gray paint scheme. And both the ADM and the Furex have the lighter gray paint scheme on them, um, but it's nice though. Um, these definitely will be um, nice additions to pretty much any layout. So uh, I highly suggest getting these cars uh, for your layout if you're looking to um, add some variety, uh, increase your rolling stock in general, um, or even you know try to assemble yourself your own uh, pretty much grain train hopper train that consists of pretty much the same exact cars. These are pretty much some of the best cars you're really gonna get at this price point. Um, you may be able to find discounts out there at your brick and mortar hobby shops or online retailers that you may be able to find. Um, you may be able to get them low as maybe 15 bucks or 20 bucks uh, a pop for these. Um, if you can't, I definitely would suggest you jump on those because um, right now they're sitting at 30 bucks uh, from Walters, which is a little pricey for this. Um, if the price was starting off at 20 I would then extremely, extremely suggest to anybody to grab these cars because they're like hotcakes. Get them while you can. Get them while they're hot. Um, but at 30 bucks, it's a little bit pricey. Um, but that's the MSRP. I'm pretty confident you're going to be able to find uh, deals on these from anybody. Um, one thing I'm noticing, and just as the table is kind of moving, it does have a little bit of body wobble. Not a whole lot. 
um, they do have a de pretty decent weight to them. I actually really like the weight um, that these cars have. It's solid. Um, you know, these these would be the cars you want in the front of your train because they are heavier and you don't want to streamline if you're running uh, longer trains. But anywho, um, final thoughts, guys. Um, these cars are nice. Um, they're not highly detailed. They're not really barely detailed at all. The only detail that you have on these is on the brake end, which is over here where the handbrake is and the, the piston and brakes under the details with your air reservoir details. Um, but that's really not a knock, so to say, against Walters because this is a main line, which is their value brand, essentially, for HL scale. Um, but these will be good additions to your trains. So with all that being said, guys, I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures that I'm going to take of these models. Um, I, did, I do like these. I plan to run these on layout whenever I get my layout going. Um, but that's a conversation for another video. Um, absent this one hiccup on the ADM model um, that you guys can see here, that piece there is bent. If it'll focus, there we go. You guys can clearly see that that's bent and the others are straight, minus this one uh, hiccup here. Um, these cars uh, didn't have any issues. Um, I do not have my KD high gauge to check height, coupler height, but assuming that that's all correct um, because Walters is a pretty reputable company so far at this point at least I haven't really had many problems with them um, if they are warped um, I'll just get a hold of Walters at a later time and I'm probably gonna get a hold of them probably because of that uh, that piece that's bent or I may try to straighten it out on my own um, but anywho I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video um, I would like I said definitely suggest you guys take a look at these cars for your own layouts and you know you you give it a once over on your own um, if you like them, um, but like I said, at the price point that they are, they're a little pricey from Walters. If you can get them somewhere cheaper, maybe twenty, nineteen, twenty, maybe even fifteen bucks in that range, I would say pounce on them. Um, but until next time, the next video that you guys are going to see from me is going to be the center beam fat, flat cars from Walters, um, the standard center beam, not the Oprah uh, opera window. Um, I can't wait to do those. I, I've been waiting for those for a while, but. So enjoy these photos and I will see you guys in the next video.